Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. This is episode 38. Last time we had some lovely Skyhold conversations with Morrigan. We met Kieran. Mysteries of the Illuvian were spoken about and other things have been hinted at which we will be looking forward to today. We've got a couple of missions to do. We've got to find where Blackwall has gone. We've got to go find where Leliana wants to go. And we're also going to check our war table for updates before we send our crew uh, on some other operations that we have available as well. So word from Zevran, a report is ready. This was a mission that we forgot about because it was tucked away there in the corner. Finally done. When I heard your agents would provide a distraction, I did not expect such a roaring fire, the confusion, the running about in circles. It was all very lively. Of course, Lord Enzo and his Venatori were decidedly less lively at the end of it. Uh, we have Evading the Crows now. Which I, I guess might be over here. Protect Clan, the Velen, and Wycombe. Commander Cullen! Our troops fortified the city of Wycombe and flew the Inquisition banner. It is good that we did so, as the marchers had soldiers ready to invade the city and kill every elf inside. They were not ready to make an enemy of the Inquisition, however, and when they saw our soldiers, they pulled up short. The Inquisition diplomat, Lady Guinevere Volant, handled negotiations quite well. When presented with evidence of the Red Lyrium, which we made clear was an unholy tool of Corypheus himself, the marchers backed down from their claims of a baseless elven rebellion, and pledged to leave Wycombe in peace. They've also donated generously to the Inquisition's coffers to make clear their support for our cause. The Inquisition's keeper, Istamathoriel, has been installed along with a city elf and several human merchants on the new Wycombe City Council, which will rule the city fairly for both humans and elves alike. Nice. Lieutenant Ro Rosaline Chambreter. Nice. We protected the clan and saved Wycombe. There you go, and I've got a Royal 16 mount now. I can see that head. Lovely. Um, and let's check an update on negotiating a deal for weapon plans. Oh no. I was unable to reach a compromise with the Tevinter. I suppose our influence does only stretch so far. He did, however, offer his apologies and made us a gift of some rare materials. I will keep our negotiations open, but it does not look promising. we got a Masterwork Sentinel sheet. Okay, we have many, many right now to look into, and also the Arbor Wilds. What Pride had wrought is our next uh, main mission there. So this is our ability to support Cassandra as the Divine, which is only something Josephine can do, and it takes zero time. The Inquisition will have to provide any support for Cassandra as the Chantry's choice for the next Divine quietly. Traditionally, the Chantry looks on open declarations with Derision uh, so they can be counterproductive, but a few words in the right ears can be very effective. Note, once the Inquisition gives its support, it cannot also give support to anyone else. I'm not participating in this mission, I wonder why. Um, yes. Inquisitor. News of your support for Cassandra has made its way to the clerics sequestered in the Grand Cathedral Inquisitor. Just how much of it will influence their decision remains to be seen. The plans have been set in motion, however. Uh, okay. What else should we check out? Uh, truth or dare, the end game. Ambassador Montillier, we have never met, but I believe you have, through discreet means, saved me from a most disagreeable connection. As I dislike being indebted to anyone, I shall endeavour to repay you with a news item of some interest. Were you aware that the Grand Duchess of Leeds recently paid a visit to Lake Celestine? Indeed, she stayed an entire fortnight as a guest of Duke Alvin Blanchard of Valmontaine. In light of her other connections and the curious amount of coin which spread across the region in the aftermath, you may wish to pay him a call. Sincerely, Duke Valère Fontaine. Okay, send our agents in. We can expose his connection to Florian for all the world to see. And if Duke Blanchard was conspiring with Florian, the Imperial Court would like to know. Um, okay, well, the agents can expose it, so... Inquisitor. We will send Leliana in. Aid those impacted by the Civil War. The Imperial Army will aid the Inquisition's forces against Corypheus, but they must also address lingering issues at home. 
Weaknesses in the Vale, no doubt heightened due to rifts, have resulted in demons on the road between Valforay and Montsamard. This would demand a call to action at the best of times. Unfortunately, the increased number of travellers on the roads, merchants attempting to restore trade and displaced civilians returning home after the war, has made the situation worse. The head of the Imperial Army has requested assistance from the Inquisition in subduing this threat. Okay, I doubt the army needs the assistance of a full competent of so complement of soldiers. My agents can scout the roads. A chance to solidify our alliance and prove ourselves their equal. A joint venture will also increase our understanding of Imperial Army structure and tactics. And merchants often travel with armed escorts, but civilians require safe shelter. Petition the Chantry. Inquisitor. We will send Cullen in. Uh, so now we need something for Josephine. Is there anything else I've clicked on that is a quest that doesn't have a marker over it? Aiding Kirkwall. Oh, who was I? I was going to have someone do this, wasn't I? I was gonna was I gonna have Cullen do that? Let's just have Josephine do it. At your service. Eating Kirkwall. Alright. Thanks, team. Good talk. See you later. And now we can look into what else that we need to do. So uh, in the inner circle, we have revelations. Blackwall has left the Inquisition. It appears to have something to do with the impending execution of a man named Mornay, one of the soldiers responsible for the Kalia massacre. Bring me the heart of Snow White. Vivian requires the heart of a wyvern to complete an alchemical formula. Though all wyvern hearts look more or less the same, she specified that it needs to be from a rare beast known as the Snowy Wyvern. The left hand of the Divine, a letter written by Divine Justinia and posthumously delivered to Liliana, directed her to visit Valence, a small village on the Waking Sea. The Divine left something in the Chantry that Liliana must see, and Cullen has learned that the Templar's primary source of Illyrium is a quarry near Sarnia in Empris du Lyon. So that is the other one that we were looking at. So I think it is probably fair for us to dive into this one first and to raid this quarry, as this one was here before the others, and then we'll be able to check out the rest. So we've acquired a new mount. Shall we go and take a look at the stables? Let's go take a look at the stables. The stables. Um. Oh yeah. So we don't have. I guess it's an interesting thing to address. Is we don't have Blackwall in our party now. He's gone. So we can't take him out into the field. Could you imagine if you, we left and we can still put him in our party somehow? That would be very interesting. Um, but alas, we cannot. Uh, he vanished. He's out of here. Can A someone... To save lives. What could be more important? Can someone please clean up these dead bodies? Because they've been here for a while. Like, fucking months. Like, they're beginning to smell, everybody. Everyone's so comfortable with the dead bodies. Why are they still there? Finally, a place for the horses. I forgot about the Ferelden horses. Why do you say that as if we haven't been here? Um, God, the unicorns are so messed up. Tiddles Majoris, the Battle Nug. Look at all these variations of Battle Nugs. The Greater Nugalope. <laughs> that statement is hands. It has hands. It's so bad. Um, hearts. Royal 16. Once thought to be only a myth, now here in the flesh. Looks avar in nature. They look like the, the Harry Potter things. When you see death, you can see those, whatever they're called. That'll do fine. It's a shame that the mounts kind of, um suck. Alright. How much inventory do I have? A lot. I need to offload some stuff and do some other things. I might customize my weapons uh, with Dagna as well. Just before we depart, because we've probably come across 
a few upgrades in our time. I also wonder if Dagna has any updates for us as well in terms of dialogue, actually, now that I think about it. Because um, we don't really talk to her much. Dagna. Now I've got superb staff, bow, dagger, and longsword. And great sword and mole and shield and heavy armor. And light armor and medium armor. Thank you for your investment in my investigations, Inquisitor. I've learned something, I think. I don't know. How cool is it that, like, Laura Bailey can end up doing Dagna and um, Bianca, and they both sound different, but still Laura Bailey. <laughs> what have you learned? Did you find out about the Fade? I got a scraping that was cleaned off you, and it's weird. And the other rift bits, they're weird. It's <laughs> just weird. I said weird, right? Answers, Dagna. Lyrium and the Fade, linked. But dwarves and Tranquil, not linked. But they work Lyrium, so they are. Somehow. And there's something there. I was face deep in a rune, and for a moment, I was tall. Really tall. <laughs> and I thought... I thought all the thoughts. <laughs> You felt taller. How much taller? Like mountain tall. Or I was the mountain. But I was moving. I, I felt dizzy. You know what I remembered? Watching a shaper it carve the wall of memory. Except big. Isn't that weird? Maybe there were fumes. What do you mean when you say thought all the thoughts? I don't know. As if for a moment I was around all my people. And my thought was all of theirs. Your thoughts were their thoughts? No, no, my thought was all of our thoughts. Like, parts. Ugh, words are mush. Maybe that's what the stone feels like. Or we think it feels like. If we think it feels. <laughs> Creepy. Is this a potential alternative to dwarves being connected but not being able to access the Fade or something? So Tranquil and Dwarves are linked to Lyrium, but also not linked. Like the Lyrium needs to flow, but if you're part of it, it takes you with it. So you can't be part of it. That makes me sad. I'm not sure why. It seems like we should be part of it. Whatever it is. Or maybe we're the ones who make it happen. Whatever it is. You know what's frustrating? Answers that aren't answers. Blah. Yeah. Bizarre. Because I guess investigating the... The dwarven, the dwarves lack of ability to connect to the Fade and dreams, and like, why is that? Keep investigating, and let me know what you find. I tried to make it happen again, but it wouldn't. And I had a headache. And Coco and a lie down. I'll keep at it. It's weird. Oh, and I made a rune. It's weird too. Be careful with it. A weird rune, nice. Something strange for you, Inquisitor. You're used to that by now, right? Okay, mind your mentor. Dagna, show me what you can do. Here's how it goes. Bring me the rare stuff for it, except it's not. Okay. Inquisitor. I'll be back later. I'll be here. Parrot's like, and I'm here. We've got so many different things now. I haven't checked these in a long while, actually. What type of throne do we have? Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's fucking brutal. A throne that's Andraste burning. Oh my god. They're like, yes, this will make a great throne. Craft me Andraste burning in the flames. Holy crap. They're like, that's a great idea. Give me some, uh, give me some more lay stuff. Give me some lions. What drapery we got? Not a lot, you know. Have we got any new beds lately? 
All right, we are done. We have done our inventory management. We have equipped people to the best of our ability. Uh, we are unable to equip uh, anything on Blackwall at the moment. I actually think Blackwall's got all of his stuff still because I don't, I don't believe it's gone back to the uh, inventory, which is quite interesting. So we are heading this way. So we're going to go to Draken's Rise Camp. And... Well, I wonder if anyone's... Ooh. Interesting. Okay, so his has changed, but he's also got an X on it. Huh. I'm not sure what to make of that. Is he wearing, like... Is his, his cape looks like um, feathers? This could be sort of like draconic in nature, like, I don't know, like I'm thinking dragon. Like Grey Warden style, like fit, griffin wings as like a, as like a cape. Interesting. With an X. Um, so, so far that leaves, oh, okay. So that leaves Cassandra which may be tied to the divine Vivian, which I guess is going to be this um, snow wyvern thing. What if this is her little anti-aging potion? Do you reckon Vivian's like old as fuck? She needs her anti-aging potion. I feel like it's gotta be for her. We'll see. Or it's for like, I don't know. Maybe she fell in love with like a really old person. I don't know. And then this fella, Solus, hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't changed. So he's still the same. We need to get to them all changing. Okay, we're going to Empress Dulion. Who should I take with me? Um, who haven't we really? Let's, let's bring Dorian, Paul, and I guess we'll bring out a rogue with us out into the field as we take on this place. Lovely. Okay. We were in Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts and Skyhold for so long that I've forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten what it's like to be out in the field after only 13 episodes of being out in the field between main quests. Okay, let's Work see. Now we are here, we are going to go this way. Uh, we can ignore the primeval red lyrium considering the fact that we don't need to destroy it. Sarnia quarry is that way, perfect. There's a corpse in this lyrium. That's how Samson grows it. That's why there's no end to it. Cullen will want to know about this. Oh, like this shit. Oh, because that's what was happening in um, in the bad future. You know, I met the Arashark. The bad future timeline, right? Where you've got everyone in their jail cells and they're just like, ah, the lyrium's coming out of them. Oh, the old one. Man, he had an impressive rack. The new Arashark doesn't have horns at all. Usually means they're destined for something special. I met him too. The only thing they seem to have in common is a tendency to burn things. That pretty much sums up the Antam, yes. Huh. Judicale's Crossing. The Grand Bridge named Judicale's Crossing was constructed in the 56th year of the Blessed Age to celebrate the coronation of Emperor Judicale I as a testament to the skill of Orlais' greatest engineers. The bridge replaced an ancient fallen highway leading to the pools of the sun. At the bridge's ceremonial dedication, the Emperor's sister, Grand Duchess Leontine, led a dozen nobles and their entourages in a stroll across the bridge to the hot springs where they took the waters. Judicale's crossing's structural supports bear architectural and decorative elements that mimic those of the ancient Tevinter Highway it replaced. One can see their like several miles away in the archways rising above the village of Sarnia. The Andrastian statues that decorate the walkway, however, are entirely Orlesian in style. Why, thank you, sir. Kale's Crossy. Oh, there's an operation here. 
We can oh we can go over here. Impressive. We might be able to rebuild this. Sheesh. Okay. Oh damn. Okay. Oh. That got a little bit bigger than I thought. I was just going I just thought this was like stuff to admire from a distance. We can restore this. Go take a look. Oh, I get the feeling there's going to be a dragon out that way. There's something on the wind. Definitely didn't hear some some inkling of a roar that gave me that sort of feeling. Oh, there you go. To war! God, as much as I get overwhelmed by the size and busy work of uh, the, the locations in Dragon Age, you cannot deny the fact that all of these locations are so beautifully crafted. Honestly, every single area has just so much impeccable detailing to it. They, they put a lot of heart into constructing this place. Oh, that's where the ocularum is? On a piece of red lyrium? Claim the Tower of Bone for the Inquisition. And How try far will this lyrium spread? Ah, uh, okay. Hello. Eat my fire spells, boy. Give yourself barrier. Power up your fire spells. Unleash fire spells. It is uh, just it's foolproof. <laughs> You're not the first Ben Hazrath I've run across. Hawk and I went on a caper with one named Talus. You don't say. She caused us no end of trouble. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Hey, one time I ran into this dwarf on the road. Short, grouchy. You think you might know him? <laughs> I'm in the Merchant Guild. Ten Royal says I not only know him, he owes me money. Oh, well, no, I don't know Talus. Sorry. I love how much Iron Bull's joke backfired. Like, I get exactly what he was saying. He's like, you've just described just one random person and gone, hey, do you know them? He's like, hey, I'm looking for a dwarf. Do you know them? And I, like, Varric takes it seriously in a funny way. <laughs> and Bull's like, uh, okay. Never mind. Uh, we got a Talos reference. Mark the Assassin DLC. I had no idea that the character of Talus and who uh, voice acted Talus had uh, so much uh, controversy around her until that episode came out. And everyone was like, yeah, I don't like Talus. <laughs> it's like, as far as I'm understanding, I think it was like someone's um, opportunity to, uh, to fan fiction a character for themselves or something. I haven't really looked into it, but... It's really interesting because I didn't even think anything of it, obviously going into it because it's a blind playthrough. And then you, you then you get exposed to people that are like, I hate this person <laughs> for reasons. Tower of Bone. The Tower of Bone is named for the hundreds of human bones discovered in a hidden chamber beneath the flagstones. The bones were cremated in accordance with Chantry law and the chamber cleansed and sealed. Local tales of the tower and its grisly contents abound. Some believe Devinters built the structure, reinforcing its foundations with blood magic. In other tales, elves built the tower. My favorite is particularly imaginative. In this story, a blood mage summoned a greater pride demon who then possessed the entire tower. When the mage died, his sons were unable to control the demon, so they commissioned eight monstrous iron chains intended to hold it. The touch of the cold iron chain is the only thing holding the stone abomination in place. Should they break, the tower will pull itself off its foundation and walk, destroying everything in its path. From the Highlands of Orlais by Lord Adamar Gardho. Gardho, royal historian. Wow. This tower's gonna grow legs, dude. Who am I to argue with, uh, with Dragon Age uh, myths, right? Especially when the oldest one of uh, 
the Tevinter Magisters walking the Black City is um, at least partially true. You know, anything can happen at this point. Absolutely anything. Uh, so we've got Shards and Mama's Ring around here. We've got Sula didn't keep. And Rocky Rescue. Mistress Poland said the Red Templars took workers from the town. So they're on their way to the to the quarry. We may as well pick up the shards while we're here. Otherwise, they're just gonna they're just gonna build up over time. So we're gonna we're gonna collect. seems to be an objective over here at least the good news is while we're on a collect-a-thon um, our characters can engage in dialogue I wish Maple Lass could fucking climb because I hate falling off <laughs> a cliff only to have to do this and then you're like oh wow look I, look how much I What's can't get up? from the merchants guild doing in the middle of a battle against ancient evils I could ask the same thing of a pampered noble to Vinter. But you can't call me pampered. Nobody's peeled a grape for me in weeks. Talk to Josephine. She can arrange something. <laughs> See, at least we have our characters to give us delightful company as I try and figure out a way to climb out of the hole I've put myself in. I try not to touch that lyrium. Well, it's the only thing that allowed me to climb. And we've got some quests, potentially. Get him. Yep. Sounding like Link for a second there. Fisherman's letter. Hey, Wormface. You know our usual spot under Judy's Crossing. I was there fishing two nights ago when the entire thing came down. A thunderous noise like you never heard. <coughs> Maker must have been watching Miss Sorry behind. I don't know how I got out of there alive. It was those damn Templars. I told you there was something shifty like about them. Anyway, I was picking myself up when I saw something glittering in the rubble on the shore. I would have gone and looked. But those Templars were poking around what was left of the bridge and I didn't want them to see me. I was thinking there might have been some sort of treasure hidden in the bridge. I'll need you to look on lookout while I dig. Come by when you've a mind to and we'll head over. Old hook nose. <laughs> I cannot be a voice actor, man. I don't understand how they do it. I like put on a croaky, uh, disgusting voice and it's gone. I have like damaged my vocal cords. Irreversibly. Forever. I do not have the... I do not have the, uh, the vocal might. <sighs> and I do it to myself every time because I fucking love it. I, I think the, the old, croaky, disgusting uh, voice is just hilarious. It's just not sustainable. What are we finding? What have we got around here? I found some papers. Snow-covered diary, an excerpt from Adeline's diary, not to be confused with Aveline. A messenger came today. He said Gerard was killed. He tried to explain to Remy how it happened, but Remy wasn't listening. I had to tell him to leave. I tried to explain to Remy what it all meant, but I don't think he heard me either. He just shivered and asked me to put more wood on the fire. I don't think he understands. Maybe he just doesn't want to. I hate this war. Mama's ring. Grey Warden Scout Shield. Come on, Maple Ass, I believe in you. Thank you. A book by a tree. Letters home. Del, it is Aldric, like I told you it would be. I always know when it's him. I get that prickle at the back of my neck. Maker knows how it happens. It just does. You should have trusted me. I knew he wouldn't let me go. I'm going to lay a false trail, get him away, then double back to come at him from behind. Then I'm going to end him. 
I hope I'll have the opportunity to send this. Maybe I'll find a messenger in Sarnia. I just like writing to you, talking to you. It makes me feel like you're close, like father's close. He taught us everything he knew about hunting, which gives me the courage I'll need to do what I have to. Love always, Diane. Yes, Diane has a very heroic um, and serious voice. Um, the only reason why this voice was uh, given to this one is I've already explained this before. For those that may have missed it, I assign my voice to a codex entry purely based on how it begins, right? Old Fisherman's Letter, time to be an old fisherman. And then I see it is Aldrich, and I thought that this letter was written by Aldrich, and he was just announcing himself like, you know, it is I, Aldrich. So I just was like, okay, we'll roll with that. And then I realized like, obviously immediately that it wasn't, but you have to commit. You got to ride it all the way to the finish line. And um, yes, Diane, just a very strong voiced woman, you know? Jelly, it's me, Diane. It's that fucking Aldrich cunt. I found him. I'm gonna fucking get him. All right, turning the tables and uh, sitting through sitting through rubble. So we have to repair that bridge um, uh, to get there. Red Templars have been pushed back to the long abandoned Suludan Keep. If they lose this ancient elven fortress, their grip on the region will be severely weakened. Let's go run off in that direction, shall we? Because it's close by. Oh, you were so close. This is, um, you know, I can only apply uh, what I will call the Bethesda effect to the open world of Dragon Age. Uh, when you want to explore, you're like, you see that hill over there? I am going to climb it with my horse because it is just so much better than taking the long-winded path around. I apologize. But it's just the way it has to be. Okay, it's just the way that it has to be. To war! Get fucking sorted. Die! I made that character do a, a barrel roll with my sword. How about that? Okay, let us assault the keep. Claim the keep for the Inquisition. So in your books, the stuff with the spies is all wrong. If only I'd had you around to consult. That blue swan flies at midnight stuff doesn't work. Most times, you pass information on a dead drop. No meetings at all. Ah, where's the drama in that? Oh, can't you mess up the realism of something else? Like lyrium smuggling. That's funny. <clears throat> Just a dead drop. Come on, mate. Taking away the intrigue. All the stories about each other is all we have. Someone help! It's weird hearing um, Red Templars speak. Um, it's weird hearing them kind of speak normally because you expect them to be sort of uh, crazy on the on the Zaza, you know. <clears throat> Sulu didn't keep documents, except from a journal of a Red Templar. Writing has become difficult. It's a sharp pain in my hands when I move them, like shards of glass in my knuckles. When I look in the mirror, I don't recognize myself. I remember when Lieutenant Erasmus got this way. He looked like a living corpse. His complexion a facsimile of the blush of life. Instead of... Excuse me. Instead of blood, it was pulsing red lyrium. It killed him and kept him alive at the same time. And then I kept taking red lyrium for some reason. I don't want this anymore. It gave me power, but it goes against everything I was taught. Sometimes I'm swept along with the fervor, but in quiet, I remember what I was and what I believed. Some say Imshail can cure us. I almost said Ishmael. Um, 
Sometimes when you just see a collection of letters together, your brain goes, you've read that word before, Ishmael. Uh, some say Imshail can cure us. He can pull the red lyrium from our bodies. If we ask him, there's a price. No price would be too high. I just want to be myself again. The price is that you die. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, Mr. Book? Do we know anything about that Imshail fellow? Where did he come from? Why are we to defer to him? He's not from the Order, so far as I know, there's, there's something about him that makes me uneasy. Aiden. I always need to be on the lookout whenever I search for the flat document looking at thingies. Oh, you surprised, mate. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who needs a warrior when you are a knight enchanter? Except for the fact that I am, quite honestly, made out of paper. This was the best game to be a mage in, like... Everything just looks so cool. And when I do say that, I think probably the best sort of mage character you could be in terms of abilities would be Dragon Age Origins because oh my god the amount of stuff that you could do just to fuck people's heads up is so good but I think in terms of like fancy looking spells that just look cool um this one is great I just always get flashbacks to when we had multiple mages that just had access to the most debilitating of spells in Origins it was so good you know, if they just made, if Dragon Age Dreadwolf, right, was Dragon Age Origins, like almost to a T, with a little bit of like a blend of like Inquisition and Origins gameplay, that'd be good, you know? I would even... Planning on settling that 50 crown dead anytime soon, Sparkler? Sparkler. Sparkler is Dorian's nickname, love it. If the locations that we went to were like Dragon Age Origins in size, maybe um, maybe a little bit bigger. Let me just move my green screen. Uh, if they were like a little bit bigger than Origins and there was like more of them, that kind of size with like more character depth, like more people on screen because better technology and stuff. I think that would I think that would sit really nice with me. I'm gonna go on a tangent for a second. And I think this is something that's a kind of the most unfortunate double-edged sword. Uh blessing and a curse of game gaming, game development. And as we move forward into our expectations of games being bigger and better and prettier, is what unfortunately suffers is um you know, that sort of writing and story element, because we had these games back in the day, in the 90s and in the early 2000s, ugh, back in the day, these video games, they were not so pretty sometimes, they were not so easy on the eye. Uh, you know, graphics were, they were pushing boundaries for a lot of the time. They were like, this is the cutting edge in graphics, but the games were not huge. They were not massive. And what held these games up on their goddamn pedestal of greatness is the writing and the characters and the story because they were like oh my god these characters i've fallen in love with and the story and the lore is so good and there's so many games that have that these archaic looking oh my god look at these graphics um and you know the games are quite small but they're magical and now what we have is we have games that are in development for like five to ten to fifteen years of development hell and then they either come out undercooked somehow, still, after all that time, or they, um, or they just, it's like a wet fart. And, and then sometimes it's a 10 out of 10. But we have many, many, many 10 out of 10s way back when compared to how we do now, you know? And it's a rough element to, to think about this is, this is why I say, hey, if they just did like Dragon Age Origins size of a game, and just focused on the characters and the story and the writing, I'd be super happy because I don't need a galaxy to explore. Um, I just need 
the focus to be there. I don't want to get lost in just too much stuff. And I think Inquisition is great in its story and its writing and its lore and its world building because I am so very, I'm a happy little boy. I'm a happy camper playing this game because I'm reading all of this lore and it's great. And I'm getting all these character interactions and it's great. And it's, it's honestly spoiled me because I'm playing like other RPGs. And if it doesn't, it doesn't have that source. It doesn't have the Dragon Age source. And it, it it's automatically worse as a result because I'm now comparing things to Dragon Age level of writing. <laughs> it was just, just like ridiculous. I'm like, oh, this isn't Dragon Age, damn it. You know? And um, the only thing that's holding Inquisition back for me is the sheer size of it. It was very, very overwhelming. And um, I think that the probably the only reason, and I'll acknowledge that probably the only reason why I have that gripe is because I'm doing a let's play because I'm recording it, right? I don't, you know, it's so much easier to just kind of sit down, turn your brain off and like go through a game without this interaction and worrying about runtime and how interested people are going to be to watch it. You know, there's, there's lots of algebra going on in this brain as I put together an episode. So I think my sort of criticisms or my feelings are very different, I suppose. Somewhat relatable, but also different. Because I, th I think if I could just play this, obviously, at my own pace, I mean, which I am, but like not adhering to like a schedule of like my episodes, I probably wouldn't feel as overwhelmed by the scope of, um, of the game. But regardless of, of that being said, like um, one prime example I'll have to close out this tangent is Final Fantasy. The PlayStation 1 era of Final Fantasy is my favorite era. Final Fantasy 7 and 8 are like my two favorite Final Fantasy games. And I honestly think if, if Square Enix could make a new Final Fantasy game that went back to that style pre-rendered backgrounds, but in like 4K, amazing detailed quality, like pre-rendered backgrounds, these little zones, but like focus on your characters, your story, your worlds, and like give us a little nostalgic throwback to the PlayStation 1 era. Um, and I just think it would be fantastic. As well as, but I think it's kind of, that would probably be like a spin-off. They'd never be able to do that for like a Final Fantasy 17 or a mainline title because I think the design philosophy of Final Fantasy is it's always pushing the boundaries of everything graphically and size-wise, and they've definitely done that with 16. But as a spin-off title, they were like, let's do a little Final Fantasy game where it's like PlayStation 1, sort of how it's put together, but like obviously nice graphics, but it's just not like massive open world type beat. I just think that we lose a lot of the... Um, a lot of what made games special back in the day with how games are being made now. But also... And if... Get, oh, I forgot they were, they were in dialogue. <laughs> and also, uh, game development in general is a fucking mess. And honestly, just a deep, depressing hole where executives drain the passion out of people. But that's a whole other conversation. And it's so easy to get lost on a tangent because I love talking about video games so much that... Uh, you know, this is the, the podcast segment of the episode where we decide to talk about video games for a second. Just give you my thoughts. Um, that's all I have to say about that. I don't know if any of that is even remotely relatable, but let's see what Sparkles has to talk about. Don't. Do you have tiny enforcers come strip me of my holdings? No, I don't know. I suppose I could always send a letter to your family. The dwarf plays dirty. All right, all right, you win this time send a threatening letter to your family All right. just remember the tangents come out of passion out of a fiery passion within my heart in your heart shall burn a passion for video games to rant test notes we must carefully control exposure to red lyrium the last one entered a savage frenzy from the lyrium we had to put it down once the Red Lyrium takes hold, their strength increases, as we expected, but it makes them even more difficult to leash. Until we obtain the creatures in large enough numbers to test different techniques, we will never achieve a reliable method of corruption and control. I may have to recommend setting aside the entire experiment. Surely the behemoth serves our purposes. Surely the big red hulking thing. 
The giant brought from the Emerald Graves last week died this morning and had received a small injury to the abdomen that eventually killed it. We have only one surviving giant. <clears throat> Sorry. I drink a lot of water. There's a lot of air in my belly right now, so I just burping. Fortunately, the, the first changes have been promising. I am hopeful. It must be difficult to capture the creatures without violence, but there is too much at risk in beating them into submission. Breeding them might be feasible. Unfortunately, no one has spotted a female of the species. Are the are the red lyrian behemoths the giants? Is that? Do we just smash it all or what? Dude, wait. Is this new information? Hold on. Uh, creatures, the behemoth. What is that? What is that? What is that? Did we get told what the behemoth even is? Shadow. Where the fuck is the behemoth? There it is. What could... I oh know, because it's got a... It's got a helmet. Like, that's a person. Yeah. They didn't put a helmet on a giant. What could have held off a battering ram but the behemoth? It took a gate off at the hinges and it screamed. Not a roar or growl, a scream or rage and pain. All I could think was there's a Templar in there. Okay. There's a Templar in there. Okay. So the behemoth... Is not a giant. Um, I have a rogue, but guess what? I also have an iron bull. This is the funniest part about knowing um, <laughs> what can be done with uh, locked gates now. Is I'm like, hey, Varric, want to open this for me? And then iron bull comes in and he goes, unnecessary. <laughs> Varric services are not required. Yo. Is there a reason why we're opening this? Just to get a better look at it? I'm confused. Usually there's a reason why we should be able to open a gate. That's wild though. They almost had some sort of fucked up red lyrium giant. Varric, you can have this one. I need a, uh, a Citadel DLC with the Dragon Age Inquisition party. And then I need Iron Bull to also have the, the pull-up bar thing going on just to satisfy me. I need, I need it. I need everyone together having a fucking party. It's like a, a tradition. Every third Bioware game even though this is a different group. We'll send invites out to Dragon Age 2 and, uh, and Origins people. Zevran's around, we'll get him. Uh, we'll hopefully reach Isabel on the Seas. It's been a long time. I think Wynne is probably dead. It's been a long time. She was ho only really holding on with that spirit, so probably would not be able to attend. Unless we, unless she's, uh, maybe the spirit um, allowed her to kind of live on as a spirit or something. Who knows? That could be rather interesting, actually. Um, oh, Suladin Keep is all the way... Okay, we're going... Interesting, I thought this was Suladin Keep. Never mind. All right, well, we're curving around in an interesting way, then. Oh, God, that's a... That's a big-ass doggy. That's a big ass doggy. Oh, and there's a fucking giant. Infected giant. All right, you're doing, uh, I mean, bull, you're doing great. How am I almost dead? Oh, I've got a red, I've got a dude in front of me. You attack the right guy. Dorian, get with a rock thrown at him. Corypheus will, will prevail. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's gone mad. He's repeating the same voice lines. He thinks Corypheus will prevail. Laugh at him, quick.
Hippolas has reached level 20. Um, oh yes, nice. I can I'll give myself resurgence so I can call upon benign spirits to restore you and your allies for continuing the fight. All party members are healed to full health, including those who have fallen unconscious. And a glyph around you provides ongoing healing. Amazing. Give me that. Um, it's time to complain about my quick bar. I never use that to move to the right anyway. I get rid of that. I'm going to have it be E. And then I'm going to have my ultimate be Q. I never move left or move right. So I'm fine to get rid of that, actually. Um, let me put that on the old ones, because I'm, ju I'm just not going to use those, but I'll just put them over there. So that's now marked as like, if I want to like use my sword, it's next to the attack as like E, and then if I want to use my ultimate, that's on Q. All the elven statues pointing us in the direction. You're have... a damn fine marksman. How do you manage that while staring up at everyone's ass the whole time? <laughs> in a world of tall people, you find ways to keep them from tripping over you. You ever get the asses mixed up? If I do, Tiny, you'll be the first to know. Uh, and Iron Bull's nickname is Tiny. I love know it, like learning the nicknames. Oh man, I hate the. All right, ready for some tree climbing? There we go. I made it. Let's try. All of Thetis, abyssal peach, not so much filtered as dredged. Should be kept in a cold, dark place, also locked, forgotten as well if one is wise. I see a book in the distance. It must be read. Kill. Q. Oh, look, it worked. It killed some instantly. Oh shit, there's a fucking giant. I didn't even see that until he stepped out. Uh. Ah. <laughs> and then Bull fucking died. Right, hold on. I got you, Bob. Hit up. And then Varric died. And then I almost died. Ow. Okay, this is bad. Remember when I was like, resurgence is not needed, and then I we literally got into a fight where like, resurgence is uh, absolutely needed? Remember that? You remember that? Remember when I said that? Well, I take it back. But unfortunately, both my focus bars have been used. And I'm all out of health potions. Oh god. The fact that you can come inside is terrible. Oh, nice barrier, dude. Okay. okay, barrier. And then... E! Ouch. And then E! That's certainly working. Oh, there's... Look, go over my trap. How dare you be smart enough to walk around my trap? Walk over it, you bastard. This giant... thinks it's clever. There you go. Oh, haha, <laughs> he's ouchie, my foot! My foot hurt! Oh, oh, that's perfect timing for me to go... Uh, yeah. Oh, never mind, it isn't. You still attack. Okay. Never mind. I'm gonna solo this fucking guy. 
Ouch. Okay. Run, 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 run. There's supplies replenishment in here somewhere. I want to replenish some supplies. Come on, walk. Walk over here. Ah, ha, ha. That hurt you? Not as much as I thought. Oh, God. Um, the fact you have a jumping move is mighty concerning. Mage solos giant. down. Why'd you jump over there? What, are you stupid? Goodbye. Easy. Varric, when you were at the Winter Palace, did you meet Celine's handmaidens? The ones that finish each other's sentences? Yes, I did. They were asking me about you. Personal things. Uh, how personal? Something about your chest hair, and whether you were currently involved with anyone. Huh. Creepy. Oh, that's so good. It it kind of bugs me, right, that this confirms that everyone went to the ball. Um, unfortunately, like, you don't get to see them. And I think that's kind of a shame. Big old shame, right? The First Blight, Chapter 4. You want to read it, however you got to get in here. Um, why is chapter four, okay, why is this all out of order? No, okay, 51, chapter one, 53, chapter two, 50, chapter four. Is there a reason why they would do this to me? Why would they do this to me? Like, why do they hate me? You know what I mean? Like, they're like, fuck you, man. The first bite? Yeah, it's not in order. Chapter 4 is actually a prequel, dude. Founded at Weishaupt Fortress in the Anderfels, the Grey Wardens offered humanity hope in its darkest hour. Veterans of decades of battle with the Darkspawn came together, and the best amongst them pledged to do whatever was necessary to stem the tide of darkness that swept across the land. These great humans, elves, and dwarves pooled their knowledge of the enemy and formed a united front to put a stop to the Archdemon's rampage. And stop it, they did. Ballads are still sung today of the first Grey Warden charge into the waves of Darkspawn at the city of Nordbottom, each Warden facing 10 or 20 Darkspawn at a time. Squadrons of Grey Wardens mounted on their mighty griffins, soaring through the blackened skies and battling the terrible Archdemon with spear and spell. Oh, what a sight it must have been. Incredibly, the Grey Wardens won that first battle. They raised their arms in victory, and suddenly there was hope. The Grey Wardens led the lands of men and the last stalwart defenders of the Dwarven Halls against the hordes of the Archdemon Dumat for the next hundred years, gaining and losing ground but never backing away. From all over Thedas, they recruited whoever possessed the skill and strength to raise the Grey Warden's banner, making no distinction between elven, slave, or human nobleman. And finally, nearly two centuries after the first old god rose from the earth, the Grey Wardens assembled the armies of men and dwarves at the Battle of Silent Fields. It was then that Dumart finally fell and the First Blight ended. The Tevinter Imperium would face a new challenge with the coming of the Prophet Andraste. Thoughts of the Blight grew distant. With Dumart's defeat, the Darkspawn were no longer considered a threat, but with the wisdom of hindsight, we know that conceit proved foolish indeed. The task of the Grey Wardens was far from over. Whenever I read about the First Blight, I always think about the um, the Battle of Mordor with Sauron, right? I just always think about that. Like them fighting against Sauron. Just that same sort of vibes. An alliance of elves and men marched onto Mordor. 
Suleon keep documents. Someone has made notes about the Red Lyrium in Empress Julian. It was in Kirkwall when Meredith died. She drew upon the Red Lyrium in her sword and was consumed by it. Yet here we are, taking power from the Lyrium and still alive. Fornia says in the early days, many were lost to madness too quickly. We must use it enough that it changes us, but not so much that it destroys us. He thinks Imshile is the key. He knows something about Red Lyrium. With his help, we can keep the corruption at bay longer. He called himself a gardener. Is that how he sees it? He tends the Red Lyrium, keeping it well fed and growing. Not too quickly, not too slowly. My Lord Imshail, there is a soldier in Sarnia who calls himself Michel. He arrived last night and has been asking about the keep, and you in particular. He told people you're a demon. Shall we have him retrieved? Canal. Demon? What a fight, frightful thing to call someone. No, leave Michel alone. He made his choice. I look forward to his attempts to follow through, although I suspect he'll trip on his good intentions and fall down a well inside a week. Imshile. Interesting. Okay. A gardener. Uh, so I think we're going in the right direction to get to this place. I'm going to have to head back to the camp and resupply because it's just, it's just not working out, you know what I mean? It's just really not working out for us. We're a, a little low on the old potion right now. I think we can quickly have a look over here. So there is more stuff. Before we headed off in that direction. Another Red Lyrium Giant. Hayden, everyone makes you uneasy. Calm down. What I hear is Imshal was sent to help oversee Red Lyrium growth in the quarry. He supports the cause and that's all that matters. Keep your nose down, do your job, and don't antagonize him. Oh. Oh no. I don't think we've gone up here. No, actually this is where we came from. I can see our little thingy. Um, let's go... Yeah, let's go back to the Sarnia camp, actually. Return Mama's ring. Resupply. And then head back in. Now, I know that we said that we were supposed to be uh, focusing on the companion quests, and we were... But then, you know, the nature of Dragon Age is you enter the map, you think you're going in a direction, and then ha 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 ha. No, I dropped it. It's gone. Granny May. Mama's ring. You found it. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll never let it go again. Quest completed. Okay. Michel de Chavannes at your service, your worship. I saw the Inquisition's banners from afar. Never expected to see the Herald of Andraste herself. Hey, this is the dude that we wrote a, uh, we read a letter about. Are you here to guard the people? As much as I can, although this was not my original intention. I hunt a demon. This one calls itself Imshale and has settled in Suladin Keep, up in the hills. Emshael is free because I made a mistake. I will see him destroyed. Now that the Inquisition is here, perhaps the Red Templars who guard the keep can be routed. All I need is one chance. Pretty fucking funny coincidence, man. <laughs> because I've been doing the same thing. Michel de Chavon, I know your story. You were disgraced and banished from court for treachery. There's much more than that, but it ends the same way. What does it matter? Despite all, I have a strong arm, a stout heart, and I still serve Ole. Ah. Ah, immersion. <laughs> this is the first time this has happened, actually. Your connection to the Dragon Age server was lost. Online features cannot be accessed until you reconnect. <gasps> Wow, I love the lore of Dragon Age. Isn't that just beautifully written? That reminds me of my favorite image ever, which was um, 
an app, which was a Shakespearean quote of the day. Um, but the internet was not working, so it, it just says like it just gives like we were not una we were unable to retrieve the message due to lack of internet connection. It's just so fucking funny. I need to know more about Imshale. A desire demon, more cunning than anything I have encountered, and I have played the game. Imshale has roamed the land for some time. If anything, he will have grown in power. Why he is here in Ombrise de Lyon, however, is anyone's guess. Perhaps he has gained the cooperation of the Red Templars, or vice versa. Is this our first... Um, well, look, like, desire demons are um, feminine in their presentation. They present as females in their um, appearance, but I wonder if this... Imshale will look different or whether he will just look like our standard desire demon. Do we have a unique uh, male desire demon? Which is quite interesting. What's in Suladin keep? Red Templars, so far as I can tell. Suladin is an elven fortress left to crumble. The locals always avoided it, believing it the haunt of ancient elven spirits. You know where the demon is. Why wait? I am but one man. Suladin Keep is guarded by Red Templars. While I would happily give my life for this, I would not give it in vain. You could serve the Inquisition. We have use for strong arms and stout hearts. No, not until Imshael is defeated. Gotcha, okay. Well, I guess you can fucking sit your butt here if you want, and then I'll go and kill Imshael, and then I'll be like, hey man, I did it. And I'll be like, okay. Thank you so much for doing what I pledged to do. <laughs> and then I guess uh, he can become a uh, an agent. Good test to see if Varric still approves of the destruction of them despite the quest being completed. It looks like he does not approve still, so it doesn't actually... Um, so there's even more of a uh, lack of reason to do so. As our boy does not care. Nothing at all, Bull? No trouble having a vint behind you? Hope you like the view. You can't deny you enjoy butchering my people. Hey, butchering implies I'm gonna eat them. Most vints are just gristle and fat in a red wine marinade. Well, that much is true. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the view. Huh. He's, he moves up. Now this is this is so interesting because <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> this is so interesting because I went to the High Grove camp because my brain was like, look, High Grove camp, and then I go this way through here. And um I forgot that we actually made progress through the keep at the tower camp and went around. So I was running around here trying to get around this area and found Michelle. And now he's moved up, now that we've found him, which is quite cool. Harald, your efforts to drive off the Red Templars have not gone unnoticed. Imshale knows we're here. He sent Red Templars after me, and a pack of shades descends now upon Sarnia. The people are defenseless. I must return without delay. It's up to you to destroy Imshale. Oh, really? Ha! <laughs> they really did do that. Call me Ishmael. Look at him run with his sword. As it's not, he's not supposed to. I was hoping for a little bit more than that. That's kind of interesting. He rocks up and goes, they're coming for me, so you have to go and kill him now. There you go. Okay. So we kind of did that uh, accidentally out of order. But I guess it's worked out in our favor. And then you would progress through here, and then you would start reading about him as you as you go through. 
which is um, very cool. So Ishmael is there. Call me Imshael. So Imshael spoke of a demon that has taken up residence in Suladin Keep. He's How could you possibly be a spy? Well, it's a pretty easy job. I do some fighting and drinking, and then once in a while I tell Paul Volland about it. Where's the snaking, the, the plotting, the subtle machinations? If you do that, everyone knows you're a spy. <laughs> Drinking, fighting, writing notes. That's all it really takes. Shit, you're either the worst Kunari ever or the best. I can't decide. That's great. Also, finally hearing Varric say, uh, well, finally hearing someone in this game say machinations, because I have always said machinations. But every time we've been hearing it lately, or every time I just hear it in general, it's machinations, like machine, machinery. Um, but I'm with Varric on this one. <laughs> there you go. You're either the best or the worst canary ever. Yeah, and now we are where we were before we left. Now back and we can proceed. Go find Ishmael. And to claim this keep. And then we'll go tackle this quarry as well while we're at it. This place gives me a headache. You're not alone there. Oh, hello. My teammates are um, lagging a little bit behind here. Thank you guys. You could have done the thing where you usually just teleport right onto my location, and that would have been okay too. Sparkler, what do you think of the Inquisition so far? It's interesting, I'll give you that. An archdemon attacking me as a first. Five Royals says you'll see something weirder before the day ends. <laughs> I don't think I should take that bet. <laughs> Five Royals is all it takes, huh? Soon keep documents from that Captain Fornia. We arrived in the Highlands at night. I was immediately given the task of overseeing the acquisition and staffing of the Sarnia Quarry. I asked the General why we needed a quarry, if the crystals will grow anywhere. Apparently, the Elder One believes the composition of the Earth here will ensure that it grows more rapidly and abundantly. I didn't ask why he believes this. The General doesn't like questions. He probably doesn't know. Some of my men feel we should take the quarry by force. The General did not specify how I was to secure the land, so I am considering a more subtle approach. Any suspicions we raise will increase the chance of a military invest investigation, uh, perhaps even the newly formed Inquisition. We must operate in secret as long as possible. I scouted the quarry yesterday. It is quiet. With the war raging, I expect demand for luxury granite has decreased significantly. A thought occurs to me. So much is gained through commerce. Why not exploit that? Something that's kind of um, cool that I appreciate is um, you can read uh, documents this late into the you know into into our game experience where we've obviously encountered um Corypheus by now but there are still documents that will refer to him as the the elder one and i really like that that it's not like this sort of immersion breaking situation um where there's the elder one constantly and then once we it's revealed as Corypheus everyone just says Corypheus you know like it's like this weird sort of shift for the player and it breaks the uh the in world sort of narrative so it's cool that there are still you still have the elder one mentioned alongside corypheus 
and it just ends up being sort of like a matter of convenience that Corypheus's name uh, never came up before. God damn. Okay. Hello? Oh. Ooh. Imshail does not look how I thought he would. Ah, the hero arrives. But is it hero or murderer? It's so hard to tell. So this is the demon called Imshail. Ahem. <clears throat> Choice spirit. Talking ones. <sighs> I hate the talky ones. Wait, wait, wait! These are your friends? They're very violent. It's worrying. True to my name, I will show you that you have a choice. It doesn't always have to end in blood. Talk. Yeah, that uh, never ends well. Simple. We don't fight, and I grant you power. Shower you with riches. Maybe virgins. Your pick. Then we all live happily ever after. Well, not all of us. But who's counting? <laughs> what? Actually, what? Okay. Did I, I saved beforehand, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I pressed quick save. Um. Leave conversation. Did I save? Um, what time is it? Yeah, I just saved. Alright. Um, I love that I can leave the conversation real quick. Uh, we're obviously going to kill the demon, but I am so curious as to what this even means. Like, you're going to summon a bunch of, uh, naked women? I'd like to be showered with virgins. I should really stop offering virgins. Everyone always chooses them, and I can never find any. How about... A rune of legend, inscribed by the gods, radiating forgotten magic, blah, blah, blah. Everyone always chooses virgins and I should stop, I should stop offering that. No, you die, demon. Oh, it's no. virgins or nothing. Spirit. If you won't be smart, be afraid. Oh, it's a fear demon, not a desire demon. Fuck. I'm falling back. Question though, right? While we're in a weird paused event, because it's saying choice, spirit. Like you can choose whether, you know, is it that same sort of dialogue of, can you choose whether it's a, a spirit or a demon based on its purpose? I think this situation is a little bit different because it's already a d demon that looks to have possessed a human body. Um, so it's a, a little bit uh, different. It's a demon that wants to be referred to as a spirit. But it's also a fear demon, not a desire demon. But Michelle says desire. Unless... Because, you know, pride demons are the big boys. Desire demons are the, uh, the voluptuous ladies. Um, we've got sloth demons, uh, and now we got introduced to fear demons, because the fear demons are like the spider ones. But also, that's on the, we're going on the assumption that, you know, we're, we're saying that Michelle's a, an expert on demons, where he, he probably isn't, but he's just sort of going, yeah, it's a desire demon. I guess we'll find out once we uh, once we kill Imshail and get a codex entry, probably. Oh, hang on! Imshail just transformed into a rage demon. Okay, what is going? Okay. What the fuck's going on? 
So Imshale is changing demonic forms. I'm not the enemy, everyone chose to be here. Choice is what he's getting at here. Oh! Zenbenkek, Gax Kang! Oh, Gax Kang from Origins, remember that? Oh, and now it's transformed into a pride demon. Dude, Gax King was that random fucking possessed dude in the house. Fuck. the worst time to do shielding. No, you're just about to die. I didn't want to even use my ultimate attack, but I might have to. Um, Alright, well... Some features on the screen are currently unavailable. Ah, dude. I wish you could change your uh, abilities. Okay. I'll do that. I'll take this shield down. Your spirit essence, march of the everlasting shield. Why is it always so cold? How An amulet of renewal. What's the matter? Not enough slaves around to rub your footsies. <laughs> My footsies are freezing, thank you. My footsies are freezing. Uh, no codex entry? Damn. No codex entry. You know what that means? They didn't want to explain it to you. They were like, we're just going to have a, an enemy called Imshale. That's apparently a desire demon, but transforms into everything but. It is the only form that was, like, pretty much the only form that was not taken was a desire demon. Um. Strange. Right? Strange. Indeed. Uh, transformed into many types. Demons. Now claim the keep, I assume. So we got a cool shield. March of the Everlasting. This shield may have been forged in Arlathan, like the Varterals that guard ancient elven tombs. If so, it fell into the hands of Tevinter conquerors who reshaped it with their own magic. 
during the Black Ages Exalted marches, or Legion Circle Mages re-enchanted it and gave it to the Chevaliers. And then we got a, um, an Amulet of Renewal, so it regenerates mana or stamina at a higher rate. Which is a good one. What the fuck? Injured Red Templar. Is he gone? The demon is finally gone. Ah, uh, shit. Too far gone. The Lyrium's consumed him. What was Imshaw doing? Why was the demon here, working with the Red Templars? A garden needs a gardener. Nurturing gentle hands. Directing the change. Not too fast. Not too slow. Just right. Has to be just right. I get it. Too fast and you end up a statue in the gallows courtyard. There's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. Imshale. He said he could take the red out. If I said yes. Imshale could have saved you. He liked to watch the agony. He liked to play. We were his garden. Consent and live. <laughs> Deny and be consumed. Oh, but what he wanted. No. Anything but that. I chose the red. I chose. <sighs> Am A garden of fear. Unless the fear demon was just the first form that he chose. Confusion. Confusion. The game has done a, a great thing and gone codex entry for Imshile explaining that. No, we will leave it up for your interpretation. <laughs> cool. It's not like there's a million codex entries in this game and the one that I want is not available to me. New operations available and Inquisition perk plus one. Okay. Lovely might. And Inquisition banner crown. Baron Edward S. Jardins. Just Jardins. Ah, oh, your worship. Welcome. I am Baron Edward de Jardins of Leeds. Sorry, mate, you're just going to have to wait because I accidentally picked this instead of you. Trading with Kalsharok. <laughs> My approach was carefully observed. This was not a uh, this was not a tie used, unused to watching its boundaries. I got the impression that if I'd been one of his Orzammar cousins, our meeting would have been swift and bloody. That is, if I'd been allowed to find the passage at all. As it was, he was polite and efficient, and he knew well the current market for everything he offered. Clearly their isolation is not because of fear, and certainly not disinterest. Among his wares, I saw the latest fabrics of Valrio and volumes by a free marcher poet three centuries dead. This only added to my doubt of the official year of Kalsharok's rediscovery, as declared by the Assembly of Orzammar. I didn't mention this to my host. As curious as I was, there was an undercurrent I found unsettling. I must stress that he and his helpers were professional and honest throughout, but there was something I can't describe. While he remained hooded the entire time, he looked me square in the eye when our deal was struck, unashamed. I lived through a time of blight. I felt the gaze of a Grey Warden and seen the corruption of his prey. Why I remembered both in that moment, I still can't explain. On meeting Novus Sturhold in Kalsharok, excepted from the journals of Sir Evrain Abernash, a noble merchant scholar. Okay. I am pleased to meet you. Ambassador Montillier speaks highly of you. You know Josephine well? You seem to know Josephine quite well. Oh, yes. Yves Montillier, Josephine's father, is an old friend. We used to hunt together. I watched her grow up, you know. Such a clever girl. <laughs> she could charm wolves to dance with hares. I am gratified to see the Inquisition has not overlooked her talents. What is your role here, Baron? 
Oh, well. The Ambassador entrusted me with handling the Inquisition's enterprise in the Dales. Much of our efforts are concentrated on rebuilding, eradicating threats, reopening trade routes and such. And of course, I will oversee the forging of relations with the nobles of Southern Orlais. Any news, Baron? Scouts report you have seen the collapsed bridge at Judicale's crossing. We are trying to secure resources to rebuild it. Reinforcements from Skyhold will hasten this. Any news, Baron? Our operations seem to be going smoothly, Inquisitor. I shall take my leave. They shall not pass! All right, wonderful. Uh, we have secured a keep. And it looks like from here, uh, I guess maybe we have to go this way. And then we can do the, the quarry. We're going to head back to Skyhold because we've got some operations. So we'll see, uh, see what's going on. Uh, and then we should um, go and have a chat with uh, Imshail. Inform him of Imshail's demise. Okay, new perk. One more potion slot would be nice because that would allow me to get the regen potions next to the health ones, which uh, I feel would be quite useful. I just think it just takes forever to get to a perk, you know? So you you have to like really, like, really think about it. Merchants will send messages when they have sales. the fact that there's so many perks I don't even think we'll unlock them all by the time we finish the game you know what I mean reveals additional landmarks and points of interest on the map of every area oh man that's like that's really useful for me that is really useful for me we're gonna we're gonna do that I'm going to get the, the forward scouts so we can reveal the stuff in the lands that we are exploring ahead of time. There's so many operations. Our plea for aid has earned us great praise. Many see our willingness to commit to Kirkwall's restoration as a reinforcement, our commitment to restoring order to all of the world. First Kirkwall and then all of Thedas. Nice. Oh yes, Dagna wishes to do something. Oh, around Orzammar. Cool. Aid those impacted by the Civil War. A letter, mar a letter marked with a Chevalier seal. It was an honor to fight alongside the soldiers of the Inquisition. The demons stood little chance. You run an impressive army, Commander. Nothing seals an alliance like the bonds formed in battle. May we find similar victories together in future. Chevalier Ju... Ju... Juquette? Juse? However you pronounce it. Oh man, look at all of this. Okay, so we got, um, uh, gather, oh yes, gathering cloth, gathering leather. Um, just in case you want some leather, you can do that. If you want some cloth, you can do that too. So it's cool that you can get, like, those resources. Let's restore Due to Chaos Crossing. Ambassador Montelier, we, the members of the Orlesian Society for the Protection of Historic Architecture, would like to draw your attention to the deplorable state of Judicaeus Crossing. The bridge was constructed in the 56th year of the Blessed Age as part of the festivities surrounding the first anniversary of the coronation of Emperor Judicaeus I, and for nearly an age, it has been considered the greatest triumph of Orlesian engineering. Now it lies in ruins, shattered by monstrous rebels of the Templar Order. You cannot allow this grave injustice to stand, Ambassador. The Crown is too involved in its civil war to properly care for our historic landmarks. The Inquisition will surely come to the aid of the people. In another hand at the bottom of the letter. Cullen, can we handle this please? I am receiving 19 of these letters a day. 
and then we're going to put wooden planks over it so it can look just as beautiful as it did back in the day, just like we did with the last bridge that we built. We'll just, just make it a little wooden band-aid. I'm curious to see what it will actually look like, if it will get properly repaired or just kind of poorly repaired. Commander, repairs to the damaged bridge at Judicator's Crossing are complete. Although we ran into some complications, the workers were spooked by sightings of dragons flying around the site. So we brought in Tamar for extra security. She did a good enough job, but next time I think we'll call in anybody else. That woman doesn't just frighten dragons, if you know what I mean. Captain Mathis. I knew there would be dragons. I heard them roar. Um, and... Liliana still has an hour left on Truth or Dare. Now we can deal with Lord Basil Moron, a golden opportunity, offer from the Imperial Army. Unmask those across the sea, which is for Cullen. I had our people remove the downward pointing triangular symbols from our outposts. They have not made a reappearance, which means little. It's clear someone has an interest in the Inquisition. Someone organized with ties to those across the sea. We've eliminated the Canari as the most obvious suspects. Nonetheless, knowing who they're not does not tell us who they are, what they're doing or why. They're clever. We know that and they have the resources. But so do we. And they should learn that they are not to toy with the Inquisition. Oh, sorry. Liliana can also do this, apparently. If our investigations have any hope of succeeding, we'll have to strike hard and fast before they even know we're looking. A coordinated effort hitting all the leads we have at once. And Cullen says this is pointless. Okay. I won't commit our forces to hunting a shadowy cabal obsessed with little chalk drawings. I say we forget this and focus on Corypheus. Cullen is the only one that always says this is pointless, and he does that a lot. He goes, this is pointless. Well, we'll save that for Liliana then. Uh, an offer from the Imperial Army. A letter marked with a chevalier seal. Commander, I understand your soldiers intend to pursue a party of Red Templars into the woods surrounding Valfaray. We have not forgotten your assistance against the demons, and are we not sworn to aid your fight against Corypheus? Let us take arms and cast these Templars out. Nine minutes, nice. Our resources alone would only have allowed for small sweeps of the area. With the Imperial Army's assistance, we may entirely rout Red Templars from the region. Inquisitor. Inquisitor. Hopefully that goes well. And now, Josephine. House Amladeris, maybe? Dorian has completed his research using the Liberalum and believes he has found a connection between Corypheus and an ancient magister named S Sethius? S Sethius? Sethius? Corypheus? Sethius? Maybe if they sound the same? Uh, of House Amladeris. This will be difficult to prove and maybe of limited use. But it's worth noting that House Amladerus still exists. Even the accusation that Corypheus and Sethius are the same person would be worthy of a scandal in Tevinta, one that the current members of that family might be desperate to avoid. Which means, guys, just, just so you're aware, if the House of Amladerus still exists, that, and uh, Sethius and Corypheus are one and the same, Corypheus fucked enough to have uh, an ancestral line. Think about that. Um, blackmail them. They would undoubtedly do the same to us if our positions were reversed. Send the information as a gesture of goodwill. And every Tevinter house has enemies. Sell the information to one of them. Um, Josephine with the blackmail. All right, babe, go off. At your service. Have fun. And that's, uh, that's my team on a mission. I wash my hands of it for now until next time. Let's go check in with Michel, and then we will go and take on this quarry and wrap it up. Hello there, sir. No sign of trouble at the moment. It's done. The demon is dead. It is finally over. I wish I could have heard him scream, but... Sanya is safe. It is a good day. Now I find myself free to choose a new direction. I would be honored to serve the Inquisition, if it will have me. The Inquisition welcomes you, Michel de Chavin. I shall return to your outpost to await further instruction. <laughs> me popping out of stealth. I hate the translucent effect of being invisible because you can see, you know, that sort of, you can see the, the eyeballs and the teeth. You know, when you look into someone's 
uh, video game model's face. <laughs> like, no! No sign of trouble at the moment. I see their silly little face through the silly little invisibility. All right, we have acquired Ishmael. Uh, let's go open this locked door off to the right with Varric while we're here. Or I suppose with Iron Bull. Uh, we can now assign Michel de Chevin operation. The boat's seen better days. I am right, brother. Alright. Who wants to open the tower? Oh no, it's a Deft Hands Fine Tools, isn't it? So it has to be Varric. Kunari axes are useless here. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Please get out of there. Thank you. Let me, let me in. Let me run in. The very slow staircase I sprint up. Curse of Marak. Oh, God. Hello. Bull, would you like a new axe? Rebuke of the Sunderland. Lovely. Fairly intelligible scroll. They say you shouldn't bring home girls, you find their fade rifts, but they don't know. I saved Colette. She came from a cold, empty place. No one cared about her. Now she's here and we'll be together forever. She's all I ever wanted. I know she loves me. I feel her love in everything she does to me, even when it hurts. Especially when it hurts. I've never been happier. <sighs> yeah. I mean... You know, don't mean to yuck your yum, but like, I'm kink shaming the uh, the mutual death with the axe in between. I think. Uh, but Iron Ball, I found you an axe. Rebuke of the Sunderland, forged both well and true, though as far as it has travelled, has never truly left the will of its master. An axe that demands an accounting, the approval of some faraway smithy, granted or rebuked with every swing. Uh, so it is stronger. Except for the fact that this mole of uh, Tacitus, 29 strength and enhanced basic attacks. Like, more DPS, but like, mm. also this one does AoE damage though as well. And 24% critical chance. Extra damage for each enemy within 8 meters. Oh, it's, uh, it's a good one. It is made for you. I love that the model is just completely different than the one that was actually in the table, though. That is, um, perfect, that is. Um, oh yes, the operation has been completed, so we can go over there, and I guess there's a new operation potentially at the keep. I'll grab it, otherwise I will honestly forget, because I just looked over the exclamation mark. So, let's have a chat. Keeping busy, Inquisitor. Any news, Baron? Judicale's crossing has been rebuilt, thanks to our combined efforts. Scouts have spotted a dragon flying through the hills. If this is a high dragon ready to spawn, there is reason for concern. Any news, Baron? We plan to push into the region to make it safe for trade and travel. I shall take my leave. Secure the third, second, and first tower. Uh -huh, as we push up to their towers. And then breeding grounds. As if the Red Templar occupation wasn't enough. Dragons have moved into the region. So far, only a few high dragons have been spotted. A high vernal, a, a Kaltanzan, and a highland ravager. But if they breed, the presence of these unique and powerful blah 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 blah. Because I can't read the rest. Uh, they will certainly cause trouble. Alright, so we'll travel to this camp, and we're going to go and do this quarry if it kills me. Because this is... <laughs> we're like, let's go do the quarry, guys. And then, you know, you know how it goes. You've, you've played Dragon Age. You know what it's like. Uh, let's set the quarry to be... That is not the quest. Let's set... This one as active. Might be able to have a suss of the ones on the way. 
with the quarry of the Red Templars. Before you know it, you're uh, five hours deep into a Dragon Age episode. It's that easy. Villagers freed as well. Ouch. Those arrows just feel so brutal too. Oh, they got down? Okay. I put all this effort in getting up here. Oh, there's something around here? Oh, okay, they'll be in here, so we should... Oh, nice. Bottle of Thetis, legally, Legacy White Shear. Peculiar and rare, a single run of this spirit took color and what has been optimistically called flavor from Lyrium in the cask's bilge hoop. A sipping whiskey if you value your innards. Work orders. The boys at Zuladen need several barrels for those things they're working on. Also prepare a batch for the Storm Coast. Cornea. Red Lyrium shipments. There is something locked in here too. Now... Part of me wants to use my brain and say, that means that it's not for that door, it's for something else. But, like, there's no other door. And if we go, it's it's marked as being on this level. Search does not yield an, another door. I'm like, is it, but is it below? No. If I go up here, it is now no longer on this level. Like, I don't know. Let us home. Shall we? We have to commit to the voice, don't we? Dell, it's over. It's done. I got him. I'm going back to my old camp to pick up the letter I left for you, and then I'm leaving this horrible place. I don't have to skulk around anymore, hiding behind trees and erasing my tracks. I'm free, and I'm coming home. Diab. Um, but we found the letter, which means something must have happened along the way. Oh, man. Hello? Look at all these objectives. I love objectives. Alright, you know how I said we we're gonna do this this episode? Well, we'll see, won't we? Hello. There's just a lot happening here. Just a few things happening. Now, villages are also around here to free as well. Ah oh, yes, they're in they're in little wagons. Break the locks, please. Oops. That requires a rogue. Interesting that it doesn't have a, the locked symbol. You have to help us. They'll turn us into those things. You've killed lots of my countrymen, I take it. Sure, usually when I'm being paid for it. That's a great time to start talking, guys. <laughs> Man's got to take his fun where he can find it. More of the uh, the vent banter. This is the this area is so cliche Dragon Age Inquisition. I should have learned my lesson. It's like you enter an area, you're like, cool, three objectives, and then you get there, and then it goes. 20 objectives, actually. Sorry. It was only three to lure you over here with a sense of, uh, you know. Just with a, a, a sense of ease as you approached. But then now you got here and we trapped you, and there's a million objectives for you to do. Let us out! You have to help us. They'll turn us into those things. The Red Templar lieutenants are in the quarry. This won't stop until they're dead. You orders to base, and Maddox needs twice the usual Red Lyrium to modify my armor properly. Taking over as the vessel means it has to be perfect. 
Have the amount ready in three days and you and your squad will get a chance to serve as Corypheus's honor guard. My own proving goes on. When I first donned the armor, I thought I was drowning in fire. Without Corypheus to stop me, I'd have torn my own skin off. Now the armor's settled, I can march for days without rest. Break a man like Kindling, I'm finally fit to be the vessel. Maddox may come to you to work on my armor's modifications. If it gives you instructions about delirium, follow them to the letter. Treat Maddox like you treat me, Samson. We should inform Cullen that we've taken care of Samson's Red Lyrium horde. Our dear commander might crack a smile for once. What's kind of interesting about Samson is, you know, he shows up briefly in Dragon Age 2 uh, to the point where I needed a bit of a recollection. I'm like, um, it's like, who that guy again? And then I remembered. And then he shows up. Oh my God. Yeah, man, you shovel those barrels. And then he shows up here next to Corypheus in In Your Heart Shall Burn. And then we only just kind of read and hear about him. And even with Corypheus, we haven't seen him since. We only just hear about the movements. It's kind of interesting in that way that we haven't had any direct exposure since. Especially with, uh, like, Samson could be a great opportunity to have a lower level villain just underneath him show up so Corypheus doesn't wear out his welcome of showing up and getting knocked back. A written confession. I will not survive this. I saw what the Red Templars did to the others. The Red Crystals. They get in your flesh and they change you. You lose yourself, then you die. That is to be my fate. I pray Lynette does not mourn for me long. I don't deserve her love. The world must know what I have done. I won't go to the grave carrying this weight. I killed Lynette's brother, Guard. He told her he was going to fight for the Empress, but never intended to do so. He was going to run away to Ferelden. I caught him one night. Looking in our bureau for Lynette's jewels, he meant to take them and leave forever. I tried to stop him, but he fought back and I killed him. I never meant to. It's an accident. Make her forgive me, and Droste grant me her strength. Lewis. It's brutal. Uh, so... Interestingly enough, uh, this quest line for Cullen um, does not even require... Uh, it does not even require us to clear out the quarry and free the prisoners. All we have to do is pick up a letter uh, from Samson and the quest is done. Can we just hand her the letter instead of just laying it on thick like this? Imagine just rocking up to this woman, this poor grieving woman, and instead of going, hey, I found this letter addressed to you, we just go, Lewis killed your brother. Who, who decided this? Why doesn't it just say give letter to her? Louis wrote this confession. He killed your brother. No, that can't be. God is fighting in the war. He enlisted with the Empress's army. I'd like to be alone. Please leave. Okay. <laughs> that was so silly. Um, better ways to handle that one, I would say. Uh, Lavellan, but great job nonetheless. Uh, regardless, let us head back to Skyhold so we can return to Cullen with the information found at the quarry. And then next time I can look into actually clearing out that area properly. But if I go through there now at this point, we'll never finish this episode because I'm sure that a million other uh, quests will pop up and I can even see that my my webcam is is really trying to wrap it up you know when you your speech goes on for too long on stage and then uh, they they play the music this is the equivalent at your order I've been reading the letters found in the quarry Samson is making red lyrium from people not anymore not in that mine I knew Samson had fallen, but this, it's monstrous. We have to put an end to him. Look at these orders from the encampment. That armor must give Samson extraordinary power. We may not be able to stop him. Take away his armor and the lyrium and Samson's just another man. I couldn't say how. Templars are trained not to destroy expensive magical equipment. Perhaps Dagna has some ideas. She crafts the impossible every day. Ooh, bringing Dagner into it. That's cool. Speak with Dagner about Samson's armor. I like that. All right, so that quest continues. Lovely. 
and we will be doing that one next time. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Dragon Age Inquisition as we explore more in the world of Thedas after that main quest. We're back to side questing and uh, we'll proceed with uh, this, this one for Cullen before we check out our other companion quests, but I'm looking forward to them tremendously and I hope you are too. I'll see you next time.